Bharat asks, which are the best books to know about Indian history and where to purchase them from? So before I recommend any book, first a disclaimer and a statutory warning. The perfect book for studying Indian history doesn't exist. I wish it did. I wish I could recommend just one book from which you could learn about the whole of Indian history. But such a book does not exist, unfortunately. And the warning is that many books, even the good ones, suffer from some some of the biases that I spoke about earlier. The colonial narratives sneak in in some places. The references to the Aryan invasion theory as a self-evident Gospel truth is found almost in all history textbooks that deal with India. And some of these books do whitewash the colonial genocides that took place in India. So this is my warning to you. Be aware of these facts. Some of these books may do it unwittingly, but it may still be present. So be aware of these facts and use your intelligence to reject some of the information where, where you perceive that it may have some of these these biases and deficiencies. Right, so let's begin. The first book I would recommend is A.L. Basham's The Wonder That Was India. So A.L. Basham was, I believe, a British or Irish historian, one of these two, and he wrote this book in the 1950s. So it's an old book. It does speak about the Aryan invasion theory as a fact, but it is still a very good book to learn from. The second book I recommend is A History of Ancient and Early Medieval India by Dr. Upinder Singh. So this book, like the previous one, deals with the history of India until around 1200 AD. So the history of India from the very beginning of Indian civilization until around approximately the time when the Islamic invasions were in full force. So it deals with India's original history, culture and civilization. And it's a very good book. It does make references to the Aryan invasion theory, but... It's still a very good book to learn from. It has a lot of detail. It has a lot of pictures and, in, and illustrations. And overall, I think it's a fair and balanced book. But like always, my disclaimer stands. Be careful when you read it. Do not believe everything. There may still... I haven't read the whole book. I have gone through it. Uh, I've skimmed through it. I've read a few chapters. But I haven't read the whole thing. But overall, it looks great to me. So this would be my second recommendation for learning about the history of India. If you want to learn about ancient India, the early Harappan India, then I would recommend this book, which is The Rigvedic People by Professor B.B. Lal. So Professor B.B. Lal was, is, he is India's greatest living archaeologist. He is probably one of the world's greatest archaeologists. He had a career that spanned more than 50 years and this is one of one of the best books he has written. This book, what it does is that it demonstrates the cultural continuity of India's civilization right from the beginning of the Harappan era until the present day. So cultural continuity over thousands of years. That's what this book demonstrates. It's got maps, figures, and it's great. So I highly recommend this book. The next book, if you're looking for information about the Harappan era and information that disproves the Aryan invasion theory, then I would recommend you read The Lost River by Michel Danino. So this book is about the river Saraswati. So according to the people who who believe in the Aryan invasion theory, which is most of the academic world, according to them, the Saraswati river is a myth. And this book debunks that claim. It debunks that myth with an enormous amount of data, historical data, geological data, maps, and and so much more. So this is a fantastic book. It completely puts that myth to rest. I highly recommend this book. The next book I would recommend for 
anyone who is interested in disproving the Aryan invasion theory is Genetics and the Aryan Debate by Shrikant Talageri. So this is a book that was written in response to a propaganda book by Tony Joseph. And it's written by Shrikant Talageri, who is a fantastic scholar. He is the man who single-handedly destroyed all the linguistic evidence that is that, that, that uh, the proponents of the Aryan invasion theory were using to claim that their theory was valid. So Shrikant Talagiri is a fantastic scholar. This book goes into the genetics-based claims of the proponents of the myth and it does a very good job at exposing all their, all their falsehoods. So this is a great book, but it's not an easy book to read. It's a it's a scholarly academic book, but it's a great book nonetheless. The next book I would recommend is Still No Trace of an Aryan Invasion by Conrad Elst. So Conrad Elst is a scholar. He's an entologist and he has been working on disproving or debunking the Aryan Invasion myth for a very long time. And this book is essentially a collection of essays that he has written over the years, over more than a decade or so, maybe maybe longer. I have gone through about a third of the book so far. It is a fantastic resource. So I recommend this to anybody who has an interest in learning more about the Aryan invasion debate. The next book I recommend is On Ancient Central Asian Tracks by Oral Stein. So this book is about India's presence, India's cultural presence in historic Central Asia during the Gandharan times and, and around that time, before the Mongol and Turkic invasions of the Central Asian steppes. So Oral Stein was a Hungarian-born British explorer and adventurer, and he did a fantastic job of exploring the remotest reaches of Central Asia and he found so much evidence of of Central Asia's ancient culture, Central Asia's pre-Islamic, pre-Turkic, pre-Mongol culture, which is what which was entirely Indian. It was Buddhist and it had elements of Hinduism as well. He found evidence of this in Tibet, in the so-called Xinjiang province of China and uh, in other places as well. So this is a fantastic resource. It's a very rare book. This is a newer reprint. My father has an older version of this book, a very beautifully illustrated version of this book. But uh, if you are able to find this book in print, I highly recommend that you grab it because it's a wonderful resource. Right. The next book I recommend is The Theft of India by Roy Moxham. And this is a nice little book about the European conquests of India, the various European powers that invaded and conquered parts of India, the competition they had among each other for supremacy in India, and the the, the, the political and military stories therein, and eventually how the British were able to prevail over everybody, over everybody else. So it's a, it's a good book. You should read it. The next book I would recommend is The Goa Inquisition by A.K. Priolkar. So this is a very meticulously researched book in which you will find a lot of data, a lot of information that chronicles the barbaric atrocities the Portuguese perpetrated on the people of Goa with the help of Thomas Xavier in order to convert the people to Christianity, in order to re-engineer the social sphere of Goa. So this book chronicles that period of Goa's history in great detail. It's a fantastic book for anybody who's interested in knowing how India got colonized and how Goa assumed the cultural shape and form that it has today. So this is a great book for that. 
the next book I recommend is The South African Gandhi by Ashwin Desai and Gulam Wahed. Now these two guys, these two people are South African nationals and what they have done is that is they have compiled a selection of Gandhi's own writings in South Africa. So this is a fantastically eye-opening book about how Mohandas Gandhi became the great leader that he eventually was. And this is about his formative years in South Africa. And it offers very interesting insights into how his mind worked and where his allegiances lay. Let me read out a quote from this book, which is printed right over here. It's a quote by M.K. Gandhi from 1920. And he says, No Indian has cooperated with the British government more than I have for an unbroken period of 29 years of public life. I put my life in peril four times for the cause of the empire. Interesting, isn't it? So, this is a a really eye-opening book about Mohandas Gandhi. I highly recommend that you read it. Right, the next book I recommend is The Arthashastra by Vishnu Gupta Chanakya, also known as Kautilya. So this is a book about ancient Indian statecraft. It tells you about how Indians thought about strategy, about economics, about foreign policy, and about governance, about taxation, and so many other things. It's not an easy book to read. It's a voluminous and comprehensive book. But in case you are interested in learning about India's past and how India was governed, then this book is fantastic for that. I highly recommend it. And I have one more recommendation left. And that is... The Principal Upanishads by Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan. So this is a genuine classic. It's an all-time classic. It's an enormous book. Its introduction itself is over a hundred pages long. It's fantastic for anybody who wants to understand philosophy that goes beyond what the Western world considers to be philosophy. This is far deeper, far more profound and it's, it's great to read if you want to understand what Indian philosophy is all about. So with that, I conclude my book recommendations. I hope it was useful to you.